One thing we've got to do before doing all of this, I mean you could do it whenever but whatever, uh, is uh, coding the code onto the, the Arduino. So here's an Arduino uh, Nano, this is a legit one, but I don't think there's any reason why you cannot use the cheap ones. Download Arduino from uh, the Arduino site and then download the tuner code uh, from my website. It's based on a... Um, it's like a, a frequency detection little sketch by Amanda Garcet that sends to a serial the hertz that is being re received on the analog input pin. So basically, uh, you're just uh, receiving that and then I'm just telling you via this what is going on. It's not a beautiful piece of code. It's uh, being coded by a, a, a dumbass that also made the code for a big button and stuff like that, which is me. If you think you could do a better one, like fiddle around and do it and share it and even send us an email with it or something, you can even make a different one, something different like a tuner that spins around or something. Watch it, it's doing its thing. Ooh, flashes for a bit. And then boom, gone. Right, that's done. So now we should have a tuner that is uh, actually working. So when you think you're sufficiently comfortable with the orientation of these things and uh, all of that, I mean, if you wanna be doubly sure about uh, things that are working, what you could do is you could um, not put the pins in or the Arduinos in and then first power it up and see whether the voltages are correct. I will write the uh, pins of these different things and um, what the voltages should be. The red stripe should be that side, which is the negative. Straight on the silk screen there is actually a writing saying minus 12 and then there's um, ground and then in what looks like R, but it actually, is, it actually says plus 12. But yeah, let's plug it in. Right, so the, the Arduino has turned on, which is good. So we're gonna turn it around. Boom, look at that. What we need to do now is, um, you can see it's actually doing something. So now, right, time for the scary bit. To see if it was all in vain. Let's plug it into the ramp and see what comes out. Okay, well, it's completely uncalibrated. You hear something and you plug it in and it sounds Something like that. So if it sounds something like that, then it is working. If there's some sort of movement within the sound, you're fine. It's just these uh, preset potentiometers over here are just a bit out. So um, a good one to do to start with is the CNTR. Turn this up. Let's try the uh, the triangle. And the try and the square. Okay, so it works, but it's completely out of tune. The first thing we need to do is we need to get the reference voltage right, which is basically the voltage I was talking about in one of the previous videos that actually sends a solid reference uh, around the, uh, the oscillator. And that's for the tuning of this octave knob as well as this octave knob, which should be a whole octave completely, like exactly an octave that should be. And then the middle should be the, the preferred node of your choice. Anyway, you'll notice here that there's a hole that actually says TP1, that's test point. So that's the test point where you're gonna get the voltage. So you need to find something that can stick in there to plug it into a multimeter that will measure DC voltage. I'm hoping this is gonna actually just like be pr stack up against here. Oh my God. My, my, my case is actually just wide enough to hold in, hold in that, that, that um, into the actual, and then, and then you can use crocodiles for clips for this, just make sure, or tape, or even solder something a bit more permanent onto the test point so you can measure it. And then over here, have a multimeter. It doesn't matter, 
like um, start with any type of multimeter but the more digits the better and what you need to do make sure the other one's connected to ground is measure make sure that reference voltage which is this preset potential up, uh, up here is as close to four volts as you can get it let's get finding that four volts let's give me the sweet 4.0 let's keep on going up oh yeah damn straight as long as it's around there so that is that set so that is the reference voltage set now basically what happens is you adjust this trk knob you basically plug it into one you can you don't even need to have it plugged in you can just uh, do it by eye and basically this voltage this needs to go up exactly an octave when you twist it so let's just uh, keep going just keep fiddling suggestion for tuning this is actually using a different tuner that's got a bit more resolution either using your iPhone or a bit or one on your computer or one like this and the thing is what you want to achieve is it could be anywhere on this tuning scale if you could see but you could see it's just here um, no, I'll just move that you can see it's here but you want it you want it to look reasonably similar so if it's moving too f when you're switching up the octaves and it's moving upwards then you need to uh, twist the knob one way and if it's starting to move downwards then you've gone too far and you need to ideally get them in the reasonable bit it doesn't matter if it's glitching a little bit because sometimes when it's close to the other value we'll, we'll bump around and there's actually a bumper jump around and there's actually an adjustment on the delay to see how uh, uh how much you want it to change over time but i've made it as jittery as possible just because the closer you are to the middle the better basically and when you're at that point where you're there then you do the center point connection and bring it up to the middle get it reasonably there It may take a fair bit of fiddling. Uh, sometimes you think you're very close, but you're just not, and you just keep the need to twist, but now. Now you can see. And then, because this is directly in the middle, when you go up, you get to C sharp, G sharp. Another thing to note is before you do this um, kind of calibration for the center point, is it's good to kind of leave this to sit uh, for like, you know, like, this is the first time you're going to do it. Leave it to sit for like 20 minutes or something to kind of like acclimatize with the um, general temperature. But it's got a pretty good uh, temperature range. The funny thing is, is when I was on tour, when I was testing it, um, I, the, the thing is, it, it was a very cold winter and these were sitting in the back of a van for most of the time and they were freezing. The whole box was absolutely freezing and inside, uh, it takes a while to warm up because it's a sealed box which for some respects is good to keep it nice and constant but the thing is you take this into sound check straight away you sound check in the boxes are still still cold and you sound check and i was like why is it a little bit different because it's cold and then and then you get to the gig when it's uh changed at least i don't know it's it, sometimes it was at least 10 degrees shift in the room because there was more lo lots more people in it i noticed the smaller the venue um the larger the shift and the more out of the more adjustments required here but um you know if you've got a nice constant um place it's fine just um make sure to keep it at a similar temperature but in the end of the day it's this is why the tuners there is for quick adjustments and make sure that you know you're doing this uh, a, re a normal room temperature because most of the time you're going to be using it in a normal room temperature just a bit of a heads up you know doesn't adjust the tuning too much uh, there's a lot of variables with this with the CM3340 I've tried to reduce it as much as possible but sometimes when you go to the extremes it can go a little bit flat but it's not super noticeable 
you have loads of these plugged in. I mean, it's an analog beast and the, 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 the change in voltage is so minimal. So minimal that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, good luck. Let me know what you think about Mark 1. It works for me and it works for my needs when I'm playing live. So I'm hoping that that will be able to help you as well. Anyway, peace. Mm-hmm.